Hello again. Today I'll continue to introduce what's new in TBC 520 for mobile mapping, particularly how TBC handles long mobile mapping runs. A unique selling point of TBC is to be a data hub to import and process data from different sensors, such as GNSS, Total Station, Terrestrial Scanner, UAS, and mobile mapping. TBC supports this because it works in a geodetic environment to position and scale geospatial data, so that various data can integrate and work with each other. Until TBC 5.11, a scale factor used to be computed at the centroid location of the point cloud, and it was used to scale the point cloud from that center. However, when the MX9 covers a large geographic area, Or an area with large elevation change, one scaling center is no longer applicable, as it will expand or shrink the point cloud wrongly, particularly for the point clouds at the edge of the project. If the same area is surveyed with GNSS or Total Station, you would see a mismatch between the MX9 point cloud and the conventional serving data. This issue has been addressed in TBC 520. Instead of using one scaling center, TBC will split the long run into small segments. Then the point cloud of each segment will be scaled from the center of the segment. With this solution, the mismatch between the point cloud and the ground truth will be within the range of the sensor arrow. Sounds complex, but our team has made quite a lot of effort. To make sure everything is calculated properly behind the scene, so the user workflow won't be influenced much. Let's take a look. This is an MX9 dataset collected in the mountains, Colorado. It covers a long distance over 23 kilometers or 14 miles, and the elevation change is almost 900 meters or half a mile. I have split this long run into three parts. So point clouds will only be generated on uphill side and the foothill side to show you the significant change on both ends of the data. Then simply follow the same scan generation workflow and process. What happens behind the scene? Starting with TBC 520, every time when the start generation process starts, TBC will automatically cut the run into small segments of 250 meters and create a virtual scaling center for each segment. I have manually colored each segment for a clear view. Notice that in the view filter manager, these segments are still managed. By the parent run, and you can turn on and off the left scan or the right scan as before. We also maintain the same old behavior in Project Explorer's mobile mapping node. Meanwhile, if you have to operate on certain segment for some reason. You may expand the scan node and change the color of the segment for better visualization.
Now let's compare the outputs. The same data set is processed in 520 and 511. The same ground control points are loaded to both projects as well. To help with the illustration, I have eliminated the systematic error by globally shifting both point clouds. Starting from the foothill area, you can see a great match in 520. But in 511, the targets are quite far from the ground control points. When we drive and get to the uphill area, which is on the other end of the project, 520 still keeps a very close match, but 511 still shows quite amount of mismatch. To summarize, with the help of the long-run segmentation and individual scaling centers, we expect a more consistent match between the point cloud and the control measurements in 520, even when the run is lengthy and covers a high relief area. Meanwhile, the data management and the user workflow maintain almost the same. This concludes today's video. More to follow. Thank you for watching.